It's 12, 12, 12, repeating date. Last time you'll ever see a repeating date in your life. So it's a great time to repeat what we did on the Galaxy S3 and unlock the Verizon Galaxy Note 2. <laughs> Here. Today we're going to unlock the Verizon Galaxy Note 2. Some of you may be asking yourselves, well, what's the point of unlocking? Why, is, why does everyone hate Verizon so much? If you've ever used something called CyanogenMod, you had to have an unlocked bootloader. All right, so generally when a system starts up, you've got your hardware layer of security, a bootloader, maybe two, and then you've got your kernel, and then you've got your system layer. Well, in order to install CyanogenMod, you need at least the kernel. You need to be able to change the kernel and the system. But Verizon, for some reason, decided that they didn't want you to install CyanogenMod. So what did we at XDA developers do? Well, we made a hack for that. There's been three of us working on a little project called the Open Galaxy Bootloader, tentatively named, not released yet. Now the Open Galaxy Bootloader was actually designed on a Galaxy camera, which is what you're watching right now. You're looking at me through a Samsung Galaxy camera. Now within 16 hours, XDA members who have Verizon pulled together enough money to buy this Galaxy Note 2. So as soon as I got this device, I immediately opened it up, examined the hardware, and tried to see if I can get it to boot from the SD card the same way I do the Samsung Galaxy camera with the open Galaxy bootloader. Now basically just booting from SD card wasn't an option at all. So we set about to destroy the S-boot, the Odin, the top level bootloader in the hopes that we could somehow get the device to fail over into a safe mode where we could get it to boot from an SD card. Well, that also failed as well because there's no way to get to it. But Ralph Dev, being the smart guy he is, managed to inject some code into the PIT file so that when it goes to read the PIT file, it then sees the code somewhere else, pulls that code, which then initiates Odin mode, and Odin mode is then insecure, completely insecure. So today what we're going to do is we're going to establish a baseline ROM to work with, then we're going to clip that top layer of security, replace it with our own, and install Clockwork Mod Recovery on the Galaxy Note 2. So let's get started. All right, so now we're going to unlock this device, but first what we have to do is we have to establish a baseline to work with for the exploit. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by putting this device into download mode, and the way you do that is to press volume down, power, and home, all at the same time. Next you press up to continue and you can take a note here of my download counter. I don't know if you can see it but uh, I've got 63 custom flashes on this now. So we'll plug it into the computer and now from the links in the description down below you can get the PIT file which you'll want to put into the PIT section and you'll want the revision ROM which you can put into the PDA section revision1.tgz and now because I'm using a virtual machine I just have to select the USB device you'll want to hit phone bootloader update and make sure everything looks just like this before you hit start now this is a rather long flash so while this is flashing let me show you a hardware exploit that we came up with hey guys I'm just charging up my Verizon Galaxy Note 2 uh, with some UART attached to it now here's the cool thing this UART is hooked up to a couple of pins inside the device and if you come over here this is the data coming out but now remember we're charging the battery now and you might know that the kernel is loaded on Samsung devices when the battery is charging now check this out yes that is indeed a hardware root you are to prompt. And BAM! Your carrier unlocked! That's all there is to it. Now let's move on to unlocking the bootloaders, shall we? First thing you're going to want to do is to put your device into ADB mode, and you can figure that out on your own. If you can't, then you probably shouldn't be in here. So next we'll launch casual, and hit the do it button, and it will ask you to reboot the device. Now the reason for this is because we monitored the logs in casual to make sure that you're running the proper version of the bootloaders. Alright, so now it's going to ask us to wait 30 seconds because this is a Samsung device. Alright, so casual then checks for dependencies, makes an off device backup, and as you can see it's going to put it onto your computer, and this works on Windows, Linux, and Mac too. Alright, so this is the final step. Right now it's going to inject the code that Relic Dev made, and from that point you pretty much have no choice but to continue on with the exploit or flash again back to stock. 
Alright, so now, what it does now is it's going to boot into recovery mode, and instead of recovery mode, it's actually going to exploit the device. Alright, as you can see, it looks like a standard download mode. We'll hit up, and then we'll connect it up to our computer. Now for the PIT file, you're going to want to pick the SCH605 16GB PIT, and under PDA, you're going to want to put the Suckit Verizon TGZ file. And then you'll hit start. And if all worked properly, you should be sitting here at the Team Win Recovery screen. But now, whatever you do, don't close out Casual until you reboot back into the operating system. And what Casual's done here is it put back the backup it made of the EFS file. And it gives you the notification, you're unlocked, everything's good to go on this device. Now guys, please, be careful with this. If you flash anything other than a Verizon or a Verizon Unlocked bootloader, what's going to end up happening is your device won't be able to come back to Verizon. So it'll always be on a different carrier. And if you do like I did and flash an SGS3 ROM for it, man, you're going to be in a world of pain trying to get back. I'd like to give a special thanks to I'm Nuts. CNZ, Joder, Invisible K, Entropy 512, and J Case. They helped me out a lot while I'm trying to package up an Odin ROM. It's been like a year and a half or so since I've had ROM. But I'd especially like to thank my team, Relic Dev and Rebellos. They're especially good behind the assembly console. Rebellos is going for his degree in electronic engineering, and Relic Dev is actually almost about to finish up his PhD in computer science with an emphasis in security. If there's any manufacturers out there watching, send them a job offer in their PM box. Links in the description below. So that's all for this episode. Got any cool hacks you'd like to see on this show? Use hashtag HackOn. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and add me to your circles on Google+. Plus. Go to plus.adamoutler.com. Until next time, hack on. Heimdall, flash, dash dash boot, dot slash, baby by Justin Biber.